No warning lights on the dash apart from the fuel. Oh, there's definitely two turbo charges. <laughs> right guys, so welcome back to another video. The goal for today is to get the 335i out on the road, do like a first proper drive in it. As long as everything stays intact, we're gonna continue on where we left off previously with the um, busted coolant pipe. I have got all the bits now. They took a few days to arrive due to bank holiday. If you're not from the UK, you will understand, but yeah, they're all here now. Right, so a quick recap of the previous video, just in case you haven't caught up with it. We changed the rocker cover because it was leaking oil everywhere. Put in new spark plugs, new coil packs. We did the serpentine belt and the tensioner and the various pulleys. But unfortunately, when doing that, you have to remove the fan. And on top of the fan, there's this pretty brittle coolant line. Goes from the expansion tank along here onto the main radiator hose. So initially I thought I'll just buy this pipe, which I did on the day. But then when putting the fan back in, this pipe broke. So it has a little hook that goes upwards. So as you can see, that's how it should be. And there is the end, which is gonna hook onto there. First, let's just pull this pipe off, already loosened it. Next, go take off this pipe. We're probably gonna get cooler everywhere. Yeah, loads of coolant. What a mess. Right, so that coolant pipe's in. Next, we're gonna do the one from the expansion tank. Clip straight on, plug the fan back in as well, whilst we're at it. After this, we will do a final check over and then um, do a start finally as well. It says blue coolant. Exactly like the one that was in the boot. So that thing's just popped up saying that the coolant's full. Obviously it isn't considering how much leaked on the floor. So just squeeze a few of these pipes so you can normally kind of hear it moving around. We're gonna have to bleed it afterwards as well. Yeah, you can see it's just going down now. Now I've probably put in about two and a half liters of coolant so far. The total cooler capacity is around eight liters. It depends if you've got an auto or a manual. There's a few hundred milliliters here or there. So make sure you do check. Now, before we get to all the exciting stuff like driving it and you know, seeing what it performs like. We need to bleed the system. You can't just whack cool it in and just go for a drive. There is a very specific way of doing it on these because they have an electric water pump, which is also known to go bad. So I'm hoping it does work on this thing. But yeah, I'll show you the process now. Now, first things first, close the bleeder screw, which you should have had open when you were putting in the coolant anyway. Close the coolant cap as well. The expansion tank is pretty much full. You're supposed to put the ignition on, put the fan on one, so the lowest setting, and then put it on the highest temperature. Then press down on the gas for 10 seconds to activate the water pump. All right, so I can hear something going on, so it means the water pump is working. There we go. Oh dear, bleeder screw. Bleeder screw's broken as well. Lovely. Right, so you joined me a few hours later, still stood in the same place. Reason being, it's an N54, it has more issues as you go along. The bleeder screw on the expansion tank broke in the previous shot. That's the reason why coolant was flying out the thing when we were doing that bleeding process. So I had to go and buy a new expansion tank. Yes, you don't have to buy a whole expansion tank. You can buy a bleeder screw, but tell me a place that sells one of them, especially at the same day. I had to drain out the old cooler with a syringe and yeah, it was a bit of a mess. I had to try and make sure I don't get coolant on everything else. But yeah, thankfully all of that's done. I'm currently in the process of bleeding the system again like we were previously. You tend to hear a lot of weird toilet flushing style noises from the water pump. It's quite funny to be honest, but yeah, I think this one's done because it's not making any more noise. What I'll do now, I think we'll turn the car on finally because I think it's all ready to go. So this is the moment we've been waiting for since the last video. Does it actually run after all of these jobs we did? And there we have it, an N54 back to life. No leaks from what I can see. Serpentine belt seems to be all okay. Pulleys are working fine. Crucially, is there any leaks below it? Nothing that I can see so far. It is quite exciting that it turned on, to be fair. I'm quite pleased with myself. And it sounds okay. It doesn't sound like it's misfiring or anything funny like that. I did everything by the book as much as I could, but because so many little things kept breaking along the way, you never really know until you turn the car on whether it actually works like a car still. Yeah, let's get a little rev in once it's warmed up. Don't worry, those revs weren't cold revs. The car's up to temp, so I thought I'd give it a few blips. From what I can see here, it's all the usual stuff related to the iDrive and it not working. Nothing really to note. Realistically, the best way to check the car's situation is after we've taken it for a drive. I'll read the codes again. Now, I can also check the oil now because the car's up to temp, as I said. And yeah, it's saying 
it's just above minimum so just between those lines is where we want to get it the remaining half a liter of engine oil that I left out when doing the oil change should do the trick as i mentioned i put in six liters rather than 6.5 i prefer to do it that way rather than overfilling the engine because then you just got more of a hassle on your hands i get all the engine bay pieces all back fitted together because this is random bits of trim on the floor and cowling and strut braces and all that stuff and then we can finally move on to the main part of the video which is taking the car for a drive now because we lost a few hours with me driving around the city trying to find an expansion tank i think i'll do the drive tomorrow morning because it looks like it's going to rain and we're running out of light so we don't want to compromise ourselves so yeah i'll catch you guys in the morning right so in typical fashion it started raining so this is a few days later i've got the plates on the car let's get a little cold start see if it still works Surprisingly refined idle, that for a cold start. Nothing on the floor as well. No warning lights on the dash apart from the fuel. So what I'll do, I'll go put some in. I'll catch up with you guys once I've done that, if we make it there. So the car's made it to a shallow one piece. Just put in about 30 quid. Yep, all good. Right, so it's finally happening. We're here in the auction 335i, about to take for a little drive on these country roads. Don't know what to expect, but we have got 302 bhp if it's standard. I'm just impressed that there's not a single red flag on the dash or creek or anything really and the fact that we took so many bits off the car in the last couple of weeks it's just amazing that I'm sitting in a car that cost around £4,000 yes obviously I've done some maintenance but you've got a twin turbo inline 6 we've got lovely styling, a very nice interior a manual box rev matching <laughs> oh mate you whack it to first yeah, first we'll do. <laughs> oh dear. I do apologize if most of this video is me just laughing. <laughs> it's mostly because I'm just finding it funny that it still all is intact. And all the horror stories you hear about N54 and oh, you do one thing and another thing will break. Sometimes you're just going to drive the car. My favorite bit about these mid 2000s cars is that they're modern enough that they're like very tunable and they have all the right bits of tech that you want but they're not too new where they have all the unnecessary like nonsense in here like stop start and whatever else like this even had iDrive which was quite advanced back in the day but it doesn't even work so even better for me I'm literally sitting in a manual six the coupe rolling away listening to a nice noise and we've got hydraulic steering as well so the car actually feels quite solid to drive in terms of you feel like you're doing something compared to the M140i which feels quite artificial now I have been told that these 335i's even in SC format have sport suspension we're on quite a nice twisty now it's just amazing that it's just inspiring me to just drive as normal there's no real like hint that there's anything wrong it's definitely a well looked after car for sure I can't hear any creaks Damping's lovely. Even the alignment isn't that off. Maybe we are to win it, folks. Maybe. Oh, there's definitely two turbo charges. <laughs> now, I did do a scan after I put in some fuel just to make sure there's no new colds that have come up or any of the super knock or anything like that. And it's still showing us all clear. So that's why I'm giving it a bit of, you know. That traction lights flashing down. <laughs> what a car. We've already used about 50 miles of fuel somehow. Little first gear downshift there. We've got an Audi all rod behind us. Imagine if that's a 2.7T. It'd be rare, wouldn't it? Oh, it's definitely not. <laughs> The tone of the N54 is lovely as well. It doesn't sound artificial or forced. There's no silly overrun. Like I can't even see if there's any button here for sport mode or anything like that. We've just got a plain dash. We've got heat seats and all that nice stuff. The essential stuff. But there's no Sport Plus and Eco Pro or any of that nonsense. It's just a, you know, a proper car, as they say. Bridge, first gear. <laughs> N54 <laughs> I can't wait to get an exhaust on this 
some of you guys are probably thinking Hamza why are you getting so excited about this old BMW now if you've been watching my videos and you've gathered how I am I don't really care about the value of a car I just it, what it brings in joy is what I'm more interested in you can have a, a two grand car like my old grey GTI or you can have an RS3 they'll all give their own different thrills can't even speak properly at the minute but yeah the reason why this is so exciting is because I've been doing bits of maintenance and work on it myself I feel like I'm just more you just get more attached to the car and the last time I had that was ironically with the grey GTI and they're both grey uh, so yeah we're definitely going to continue with all this DIY stuff and it's just so much more exciting anyone can go and drop their car off to a garage and come back with a 900 million horsepower beast it doesn't really it's not the same as taking apart your four grand bmw and then it boosts nicely afterwards lovely man lovely and into a 30 fourth gear cruise is fine probably end up just using this on long journeys i'm getting carried away in aren't i in a little village now Suspension so supple even on these 19s which look like they have rubber bands or tires This is very comfy. It's more comfy than my 140i. That's for sure. Nice wearing I did notice a bit of waste gear rattle when we turned it on earlier as well Who cares man? Who cares? It drives fine. It's a real like heavy like Yeah, that like you're driving this once it gets into boost it just literally flies away right i think i've had my fun i'm happy with the way this thing performs i don't want to push my luck any further what we'll do we'll head back home do a final scan just to make sure everything's all sound and we'll wrap up the video there just as i ended that can you hear that there's some weird something's fell off <laughs> So we managed to make it home in one piece in the 335i it literally sounded like a steam train going down the road now i have identified our culprit for the knocking noise you can see over there the under tray is pretty much hanging off while the middle section of it so i'm guessing when i took off the front part um, it loosened that section and i haven't put it back on properly minor mistake really i'm glad the actual main parts of the car are all fine the engine and the gearbox and everything else something like that I'm just gonna put a few screws in and we're good to go little taster of the upcoming videos we're gonna scan the car with mhd now if you know about mhd it's a tuning platform for these things and most of the modern bmws but we can also check fault codes and it's saying dme active codes none so yeah seems like the 335 is all sound as long as you put your under trays back on properly now if you enjoyed today's video make sure you drop a like on it subscribe as well if you are new to the channel hopefully that gave you guys a good taster of what the 335 is all about I'm genuinely surprised considering it came from auction, totally sight and seen. But yeah, a lot more stuff to come. I'll see you in the next video.